What if I told you that there is a hidden network of threads that connects everything in the universe? A web of invisible matter that shapes the cosmos and holds the secrets of its origin and evolution. And what if I told you that we have just discovered one of the earliest and longest strands of this cosmic web, stretching for three million light years and containing ten ancient galaxies and a supermassive black hole? Sounds incredible, right? Well, that's exactly what we are going to talk about in this episode. Stay tuned as we explore this amazing discovery made by astronomers using NASA's James Webb Space Telescope and learn more about the cosmic web and its role in the history of the universe. To begin, we need to understand what exactly the cosmic web is. Cosmic web is a term that describes the large-scale structure of matter in the universe. It consists of filaments of dark matter and gas that form a complex network, with dense clusters of galaxies at the intersections and vast, empty voids in between. It is not something we can see with our eyes, because most of its matter is dark, meaning it does not emit or reflect light. That's what we call dark matter, which is a mysterious substance that makes up about 85% of all matter in the universe. But we only know it exists because of its gravitational effects on normal matter, such as stars and galaxies. The term cosmic web was coined in 1996 by Richard Bond from the University of Toronto, who was inspired by the work of Yakov Zeldovich. Zeldovich and his collaborators showed that tiny fluctuations in the density of matter in the early universe could grow into large-scale patterns under gravity, forming sheets, filaments, and knots of matter. These patterns were later confirmed by observations of galaxy surveys and simulations of structure formation. Cosmic web is the result of billions of years of gravitational attraction and expansion. After the Big Bang, the universe was very hot and dense, and almost uniform in density. But there were tiny fluctuations in the distribution of matter, which grew over time as gravity pulled more matter into them. These fluctuations became the seeds of the cosmic web, forming clumps and filaments of dark matter that stretched across space. As the universe expanded, these structures became more pronounced and visible, as normal matter followed the dark matter and formed stars and galaxies along the filaments. Furthermore, cosmic web is not static, but dynamic and evolving. Matter is constantly flowing from the voids into the filaments, and from the filaments into the clusters, where galaxies collide and merge. It also changes shape as the universe expands, stretching and distorting its threads. We study cosmic web to better understand how galaxies form and evolve over time and how they are influenced by their environment. But how can we study something that is invisible? One of the best ways to do that is to use powerful telescopes that can observe distant galaxies and quasars. Quasars are extremely bright objects that are powered by supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies. They are so luminous that they can be seen across billions of light years, making them ideal probes for exploring the early universe. Quasars also have a strong effect on their surroundings, as they emit intense radiation and jets of particles that can heat and ionize the gas around them. Recently, astronomers using NASA's James Webb Space Telescope have made an astonishing discovery. They have found a thread-like arrangement of 10 galaxies that existed just 830 million years after the Big Bang, connected by a filament of dark matter and gas. This filament is anchored by a very distant and luminous quasars, called J0305, which appears in the middle of a cluster of three galaxies on one end of the structure. The quasars' brightness outshines its host galaxy, making it difficult to see with other telescopes. This is one of the earliest filamentary structures that people have ever found associated with a distant quasars. It spans 3 million light years across, which is about 30 times larger than our own Milky Way galaxy. The filament contains enough mass to make hundreds of billions of stars, and it is likely to grow even larger over time as more matter flows into it. Astronomers believe that this filament will eventually evolve into a massive cluster of galaxies, much like the well-known coma cluster in the nearby universe. A SPIRE project which made this discovery has as its main goal to study the cosmic environments of the earliest black holes. The project uses Webb's near-infrared camera to observe 25 quasars that existed within the first billion years after the Big Bang, a time known as the Epoch of Rionization. 
This was when the first stars and galaxies ionized most of the hydrogen gas in space, making it transparent to light. But why is this discovery so important? Well, because it tells us a lot about how the cosmic web formed and evolved in the early universe, and how it influenced the formation of stars and galaxies. For example, we now know that filaments were already present and visible at such an early time, and that they were associated with quasars and galaxies. We can also see that quasars can create bubbles of ionized gas around them, which can affect the temperature and density of the surrounding matter. And it shows us that the cosmic web is not uniform, but has variations in its structure and properties. But how did supermassive black holes exist and grow in the early universe? And how did these early supermassive black holes potentially regulate the formation of stars in their galaxies? These are some of the questions that the Aspire project aims to answer. Supermassive black holes are thought to form from smaller black holes that merge together or accrete large amounts of gas from their surroundings. However, it is not clear how they could grow so fast and so early in the history of the universe when the available gas and time were limited. One possibility is that they formed from the direct collapse of massive clouds of gas, skipping the intermediate stages of star formation. Another possibility is that they were seeded by the remnants of the first stars, which were much more massive and short-lived than stars today. Moreover, supermassive black holes can also affect the formation of stars in their host galaxies by either suppressing or enhancing it. On one hand, they can suppress star formation by heating and blowing away the gas that would otherwise form stars, or by preventing more gas from falling into the galaxy. On the other hand, they can enhance star formation by triggering shocks and turbulence in the gas, or by inducing gravitational instabilities that lead to star formation. The balance between these effects depends on many factors, such as the mass and spin of the black hole, the properties of the gas, and the feedback mechanisms involved. By studying the quasars and their associated galaxies and filaments, a spire can shed light on these processes and reveal how supermassive black holes influence the evolution of the cosmic web and the emergence of cosmic structure. For example, it can measure how much gas is available for star formation in different regions of the filament and how it is affected by the quasar's radiation. It can also compare the properties of galaxies near and far from the quasars and see how they differ in their star formation rates and histories. And it can test different models of black hole formation and growth and see which ones match the observations better. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed learning about this amazing discovery and how it helps us understand our universe better. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content. And don't forget to share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. See you next time.